guys, it's Melanie. Welcome to my channel. Today starts a reading vlog, so stay tuned. So I was sent another Sips Buy box, so I wanted to do another weekend reading vlog because I think these just work perfectly together. So let's start out with my tea. So if you don't know, Sips Buy is a tea subscription box. It's like $15 a month. You get somewhere from like 12 to 15 teas um, or enough to make 12 to 15 cups of teas. You get like four different kinds of tea every month. You can get loose tea, you can get bag tea. You fill out a survey and they kind of personalize it to you. What you like, whether you like loose or bagged or fruity or spicy or whatever. So these are the ones made for Melanie. And I personally really love like the fruity or the like sweet desserty kind of teas. Those are my favorites. So I actually went ahead and opened up the box so I could pick out the tea that I'm having right now because it's like seven o'clock at night. <laughs> So I needed a caffeine free one and I decided to go with the Citrus Rose Tea by the Tea Spa or Tea Spa. And it looks like this. I put it in a little Ziploc baggie because I just had to cut it open. Um, but maybe I can show you the tea. It looks like this. You got some big pieces of flowers in there and stuff. And also very small pieces. Because there's a lot of really fine stuff, I decided to go with um, their uh, little tea bags. Because if you get a loose tea, they send you a like, little sachet here with a bunch of disposable tea bags in it. Normally, I would use my own little tea strainer, but the particles are so fine, it just falls through. So, I've got it here in the little tea bag. And I've got my eight ounces of hot water in my Disney princess mug. So we're going to go ahead and set that to steeping. This particular one steeps for um, two minutes, I think it says. So this says, it's caffeine free. Yes, two plus minutes. It says, this blend is a secret weapon against feeling blue. Brighten up your day and kick cold to the curb with this fruity and delicious blend of sweet citrus and rose. And they also have a code for 25% off. It's T-H-E-T-E-S-P-A. The Te Spa. T-E Spa. Um, I guess if you go on to Sip Spa, you can order the teas individually. But yeah, so that's the discount code for that. So we're going to let that steep and let's talk about what I'm reading. So just before I started filming this, I actually finished a book. I finished reading Elizabeth Webster and the Court of Uncommon Pleas by William Lashner. Oh my gosh, this book was so much fun. So this is a middle grade and our main character, Elizabeth Webster, she very much reminds me of Lydia Dietz from Beetlejuice. She's like the middle school version of Lydia Dietz. And I, that's totally how I picture her in my head. And she's sort of a, like this story kind of gives me those vibes, but it also gives me like City of Ghosts by V.E. Schwab vibes. This is a lot of fun. So Elizabeth Webster, she is a 7th grader and her best friend Natalie, well it's pretty much like her only friend, nobody really hangs out with her because she kind of just keeps to herself, she's um, <laughs> not very social. And then there's Henry Harrison who's like this 8th grade like super jock and like super popular, all the girls like him. And he comes up to their lunch table one day and he wants Elizabeth to help tutor him in math. And he lives in this like apparently spooky place that nobody wants to go to and she really doesn't want to go and tutor him but she does anyway. 
and when she gets there, it's not about tutoring. He apparently has a ghost in his house, and the ghost has said Elizabeth Webster's name, and he needs Elizabeth to help him help this ghost free, or whatever, like, get her gone out of his house, and Elizabeth learns about her on family's past, and why this ghost said her name, and what makes this ghost think that she can help in any way. And it's it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of supernatural in it, but there's a lot of um, real life. And uh, Elizabeth's stepfather is a lawyer, and Elizabeth's real father is an attorney for the damned. Yeah, it's so much fun. I highly recommend it. I gave this four stars. But yeah. That's what I just finished earlier today, like maybe 15 minutes ago. I'm also currently reading A Clash of Kings as a buddy read. I'm a little behind uh, cause today. I'm supposed to be further in, but I'm currently on page 228 of this. And by the end of the day today, I'm supposed to be at 260. By the end of this weekend, I need to be... 432 so I gotta read this much by then it doesn't look like a whole lot but this book is massive and these pages are super thin and the writing is tiny it's ridiculous but my other goals for reading this weekend I have this arc that I've had for a very long time of brunch at bittersweet cafe by Carla Loriano and this well this actually came out February of 2019 but this is actually a sequel to the Saturday Night Supper Club, which I have gotten on Hoopla from my library. So let me read you about this real quick. This says, Denver Chief Rachel Bishop has accomplished everything she's dreamed and something she never dared hope, like winning a James Beard Award and heading up her own fine dining restaurant. But when a targeted smear campaign causes her to be pushed out of the business by her partners, she vows to do whatever it takes to get her life back, even if that means joining forces with the man who inadvertently set the disaster in motion. Essayist Alex Cannon never imagined his pointed editorial would go viral. Ironically, his attempt to highlight the pitfalls of online criticism has the opposite effect. It revives his own flagging career by destroying that of a perfect stranger. Plagued by guilt-fueled writer's block, Alex vows to do whatever he can to repair the damage. He just doesn't expect his interest in the beautiful chef to turn personal. Alex agrees to help rebuild Rachel's tarnished image by offering his connections and his home to a host of exclusive pop-up dinner party to host an exclusive pop-up dinner party targeted to Denver's most influential citizens, the Saturday Night Supper Club. As they work together to make the project a success, Rachel begins to realize Alex is not the unfeeling opportunist she once thought he was, and that perhaps there's life and love outside the pressure cooker of her chosen career. But can she give up her lifelong goals without losing her identity as well? So I'll be listening to that, and then I would like to also finish this. So those are my reading goals this weekend, to get those two completed, as well as keep on track with what I need to for A Clash of Kings. So I have a few things to do around the house tonight, so I'll probably listen to that while um, I do those things. And then tomorrow I'm going to go and uh, have a pedicure, and then on Saturday we're going to go and have us a fun little picnic and hike. So... Yeah, there'll be lots of fun stuff to show you. Plus, I'll be working out, like, a lot. Though, I'm not, I don't think I'll include a lot of the working out stuff because that's kind of a separate, my weight loss journey kind of thing. Um, which, if you haven't seen those, I'll link that up here for you to go check out. But, yeah, that's kind of what I have planned for this weekend. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And... Oh, I have lots and lots of book mail. Would you like to see it? <laughs> Hold on. 
It's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> yep, this is my book mail. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't think I'll go into too much about what these are about. Because uh, I'll do that in like my haul. But I can show you what I got. So these all came from the Amazon Vine program that I'm part of where I get to select certain things to review. Um, like this watch, which is a very cool, like smart watch. I love it. Okay, so the first book I have here, it says, this summer, Grand Central Publishing cordially invites you to The Lion's Den. And it has like this little sleeve here. It looks like this. This is a riveting tale of friendship and betrayal. Oh, and this comes out May 2020. Okay, the next one is Most Likely by Sarah Watson. And this says it's an empowering and heartfelt novel about a future female president's senior year of high school. And this comes out March 2020. So this month. <laughs> I don't know what day though. Okay, next up is The Book of Second Chances by Catherine Slee. This says Catherine Slee's debut is a charming, uplifting novel about love, loss, hope, and courage, and finding your way in the world. Perfect for fans of Eleanor Ophelian is completely fine and the keeper of lost things. And this comes out May 5th, 2020. Okay, and next up is King and the Dragonflies by Kaysen Callender. I totally picked this one up because of Kayla from Books and Lala. Uh, this one's about a boy named King whose brother passes away and he believes he's been transformed into a dragonfly. So, yeah, that's all I know about this. This actually came out February 4th, 2020. Also, I got this, uh, Keto, A Woman's Guide and Cookbook, the groundbreaking program for effective fat burning, weight loss, and hormonal balance. I'm not really doing a keto diet, but, I mean, healthy meals are always a good option. And, well, this is already out. It's not uh, an arc. So, I got that. Okay, next we have The Stars We Steal by Alexa Don or Donne. D-O-N-N-E. And this says, The Bachelorette goes to space in this gripping story about a young girl caught in a world of royal intrigue and romance. And this came out February 4th, 2020. Okay, next up is Mother, Daughter, Widow, Wife by Robin Wasserman. And this is a psychologically riveting novel about a woman with no memory, the scientist invested in her, in studying her, and the daughter who longs to understand. Oh, and this comes out June 2020. June 23rd, 2020. Next is Siri, Who Am I by Sam Tashida. And this is Memento Reimagined for the Social Media Era in this hilarious comedy about a young woman who uses her Instagram account to retrace her steps after she wakes up in a Los Angeles hospital with no memory of who she is or who she's claiming to be. And this comes out May 5th, 2020. And then I have The Rheumatoid Arthritis Healing Plan, a holistic guide and cookbook for inflammation relief. And I don't necessarily have this problem. However, again, healthy recipes. And uh, my uh, personal trainer has said to try to eat, like, foods that help with inflammation just because of all of the working out I'm doing. Anyway, so this... Um, and this isn't an arc either. It's just a cookbook. And this one actually came in the mail today. That is Dear Emmy Blue by Leah Lewis. And I know that this is about a girl who, I'm not sure what age, as a kid releases a balloon with her biggest secret and her email address. And then a boy in Paris gets her or like finds her balloon and he re reads the secret and responds to the email and they become friends 
and now she's in her 20s and she has fallen in love with her email pen pal I guess but it may not be everything she hoped for and this came out or comes out July 14th 2020 so here's my little mini haul yay okay so that was long enough oh my gosh my tea I forgot <laughs> it's been steeping a long time it only needed to steep for two minutes well, it's obviously a very light tea it smells nice It's not what I expected because I don't really taste anything citrus. It almost has like a light cinnamony taste to it. Mm. It's not bad. It's a very, like I said, a very, very light flavor tea. Good for a cozy night in. Oh, there's a Sasha tail. And there's a Sasha. Look, Sasha. Look at the camera. Look right there. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm going to go and get stuff done. And I will talk to you probably tomorrow.
Friday, March 6th, and I have my hot water here to make my next cup of tea. The tea that I'm trying today is the Raspberry and Pomegranate by Ahmed, or um, yeah, Ahmad tea. Looks like this. These come in individual bags. So we're going to try this one out. This is a green tea. This says it's medium caffeine. A mad tea is a British family business with a long tradition. They supply tea for the royal collection, including Buckingham Palace. You get 20% off plus free shipping with code SIPSBY20. So, yeah. Check that out if you're interested. This has to steep for two to three minutes. So, I'm going to... Pop that in there. So I had a lovely outing today with working out and getting my pedicure and I went and got Smoothie King because I like Smoothie King. <laughs> also on Fridays at Smoothie King they have um, five dollar 32 ounce smoothies. Though the ones I get are actually six dollars because they're meal replacement ones. But, let's see, as far as my reading goes, I have gotten caught up on where I need to be for A Clash of Kings, and I'm currently on page 322 of this, and as far as my other two books that I wanted to read, I've been listening to the audiobook of The Saturday Night Supper Club, and I'm like, I don't know, maybe two-thirds of the way through it, it looks like this. Anyway, the food in here sounds amazing, but one thing I didn't realize going into this series is it's actually like Christian romance. It's not heavy on the religion, but it does bring it up here and there. So if that's something that you want to veer away from, just to let you know, or if that's something that you're looking for, just to let you know. Um, I'm not really a religious person, so I, I'm just kind of like, everybody's free to believe whatever they want to believe, and it's, yeah, cool with me. But, um, I'm enjoying the book so far. It's, so you have this reporter who wrote a story, didn't necessarily mention her, but mentioned something where people could figure out who they were talking about. But he wasn't doing it in like a bad way and it kind of backfired and then she wouldn't issue a statement to anybody because she thought it was stupid and she didn't want to um, acknowledge some of these things that people are saying. And then some like tabloid reporter came at her asked her something and she responded and they kind of chopped what she said and made it look like she said something really bad and she kind of like lost 
her business. The restaurant that she was a partner with, they, they decided to buy her out that she was just too bad of press. So now pretty much her career has gone to the toilet, but she did make a profit off of that and she wants to figure something out to kind of get her back on track, rebuild her reputation and work towards getting her own restaurant. And the reporter, he feels really, really bad for starting this whole thing and he wants to do whatever he can to kind of make it up to her. So he partners with her to do this Saturday night supper club. He's got the venue, he's got the contacts, and so he brings in these influential people to this supper club where she is a freaking star. And they've only had one supper club so far, and it was a big hit. And that's just kind of where I'm at at this point in the story. And I don't really have anything else to check in with you. Um, like I said earlier, or yesterday, we have fun plans tomorrow, and I'll take you along for that. But that's it for now. I'm dumb. That's not it for now. I still have my tea to try. So let's try that. Okay, so this is like, um, it almost looks like an apple cider color. It smells nice and fruity. I love fruity tea so much. Mm, okay, this is really good. It's got like, the initial taste is this burst of like fruit flavor and then the aftertaste is like, well, I don't really know how to describe it, but just that tea flavor. It's quite lovely. Okay, so I'm going to go and drink my tea, continue listening to my audiobook, and I will just talk to you later.
are back home. We had a lovely day with the hiking and oh my gosh, Xander had a blast. Like that was probably like one of his favorite things. Oh, I just noticed my lipstick. <laughs> that was probably one of his favorite things that we've done. He thoroughly enjoyed that. So I finished listening to the audiobook of the Saturday Night Supper Club. I give it like 3.5 stars. It was good. It was a fun story. Um, it did get a little um, religion heavy towards the end, but other than that, it, not so much. Um, like I said, I enjoyed it. It was fun. It was a cute story. And now I am reading Brunch at Bittersweet Cafe. So, in, this, in a Saturday Night Supper Club, you have three friends. The main character is Rachel in the first book. And her two best friends, Melody and Anne, I think, well, this one is kind of following Melody. And then I think the third book follows Anne, probably. Uh, but this one, she is, uh, she was a pastry chef in the restaurant where um, Rachel worked before. And when Rachel kind of got pushed out of her restaurant, Melody left as well. And she's kind of been struggling with working not the best jobs since then and working... Um, for other people in other bakeries and she's just not happy and then her grandmother passes away and leaves her her money her house and um, a car and now she's got to decide what she wants to do with her future and also there is a guy a cute pilot guy don't really know where he stands but it started out like the very first chapter his car got stranded in some snow because these are based in Denver Colorado his car got stranded in snow he it was like four o'clock in the morning and he needed to use the phone in the bakery and she was working so and apparently he's super cute and a pilot yeah <laughs> all right so that's it that's all I have for you for now now I think I'm going to, I'm thinking I'm going to go and take my makeup off and maybe put a mask on and sit and read for a while. So I will just, I'll probably talk to you tomorrow. Before I go, I totally forgot to tell you about the tea. So I made it this morning so we could take it along with us because it was a little chilly when we first left. Um, and also it was the high caffeine tea in my box. So the package is at the coffee maker in the kitchen, but this is called Current Affair by Nautilus Tea. And it was a Chinese black tea, dried currants, current flavor, vanilla bean, vanilla bean flavor, rose petals, and rosebud. Rosebuds. Uh, high caffeine current affair has lovely current and vanilla flavors with a light rose sweetness and they also have a discount code of 20% off with code sips by 20 so oh and as far as that goes it had a nice a really nice flavor I thought it was gonna be a lot harsher than it was because typically I would think high caffeine is gonna be a harsher taste but it was very smooth Marty and I both had uh, a glass of tea or a cup of tea and it was quite lovely um didn't leave a bitter aftertaste at all the one yesterday uh the raspberry and pomegranate actually left more of that bitter aftertaste than this one did i really enjoyed this one and then tomorrow i will be trying some white peach oolong which i'm really looking forward to okay now i'm gonna go and clean my face off and i'll talk to you later Come
So I didn't vlog anything yesterday. I was exhausted. I had gym, like I went to the gym in the morning and I way overdid it. I was exhausted. Everything hurt. And so I didn't really vlog anything and uh, I didn't do a huge amount of reading. Really all I did as far as reading yesterday goes is uh, my Clash of Kings buddy read. But Saturday, I I stayed up until like 1 o'clock in the morning, Sunday morning, binge reading brunch at Bittersweet Cafe. So I can't remember if I told you what I rated the Saturday Night Supper Club, but I give that a 3.5. I enjoyed it. It was fun. It was not something I would normally pick up, but I did end up enjoying it. But not likely something I would read again. This, however, was the sequel. It follows Melody, which is one of the friends from the main uh, from our main character in the first book. This one, she is a pastry chef and she's like, she's working in these bakeries that make like cookie cutter kind of stuff and not you know, using her creativity. And she's always wanted to own her own shop. She's also always wanted to go back to Paris. And then her grandmother passes away and leaves her, um, her money, her house and a car. And also, there is a guy. So, at the very beginning, the first chapter, he his car gets stranded at like 4 o'clock in the morning. He's a pilot, so that's why he was out as late as he was. 4 o'clock in the morning, his car gets stuck in the snow, because they're in Denver in winter. And the only place that has anybody in it is the bakery, where she's prepping the bread for the next day. And she lets him in to call a tow truck. And... She ends up giving him a ride home when the tow truck doesn't arrive in time. And they're both instantly attracted to each other. But he hasn't ever had any kind of serious relationship because of his parents. And then he's also working on purchasing his own charter down in Florida. And so he knows he's going to be leaving in just months time. So he doesn't want to get serious with her. But he really likes her. And she just knows that he's trouble. And that's who she typically attracts, is trouble. And she doesn't really want to get involved with him, but she does anyway. And it was super cute. I really enjoyed it. The, okay, so this, I gave this four stars. What kept me from giving it higher was the religious aspect of it because it does start getting like the first book it gets religious heavy towards the end and for me that kind of just takes away from the book for others it may not but for me it does and that's why i'm not giving it a five star i actually even teared up at one point because it got a little emotional but it was really good four stars this is one that i would actually reread again because i think any of the books in this series can really be read as a standalone. As far as reading the next book in the series, I don't know. I mean, I'm kind of curious because now I know about Rachel and I know about Melody and I kind of want to know about, you know, what's going on with Anne, but I don't know if I would read it or not. I may end up listening to the audiobook at some point. And then I also did get caught up on my buddy read, and I've read today's as well, so I'm currently on page 484 of A Clash of Kings. So I did successfully do everything I wanted to do this week. Though I was supposed to start this video clip with uh, steeping my tea, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Because I've got my hot water sitting right here. This one comes in an individual tea bag. Oh, it smells really good. Okay, let me show you one of the unopened packs. So, this is a white peach by Stash. It's called White Peach Oolong by Stash Tea. This is a medium caffeine. Oolong from the cliffs of China's 
Wuyi Mountains, paired with the fresh, sweet flavors of white peach. Enjoy this refreshing tea as a gentle pick-me-up any time of day. Free shipping orders uh, $20 and up with code SIPS FREE SHIP for more of these. So I have to let that steep for three to five minutes, which would have been perfect if I had done it at the beginning of this clip, but I didn't. So yeah, <laughs> I guess I'll come back in just a little bit once it has steeped. Oh, I'm using my, uh, it looks like Facebook but it's uh, my mom mug. This is something Xander got me for Mother's Day one year. I thought it was cute. Okay, well, it's already very quickly changing colors. It's almost like a, a greenish brown color. And it smells so good. I cannot wait to try it. All right, I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna go do something for a couple minutes and then I will be back. Here's a little Katniss to look at. She sees herself. <laughs> Alright, I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, I'm back. Alright, so... Wow, this got dark. So, it's almost like... Copper penny kind of color. I wonder if I can show you. Hold on. That's what it looks like. All right, let's try this. It's not as fruity as I was hoping. It's pretty smooth though. It doesn't seem to leave too much of like a harsh aftertaste so I like it so I'm going to drink this and I've actually got to get to editing this video so I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did give me a big thumbs up if you'd like to see more videos like this click that subscribe button down below and also if you're interested I'll have the link for a sip spy down in my description with a discount code as well until next time, remember to always be completely you. Bye!